stones for construction of roads. House of Representatives investigates rising cement prices. No fewer than 11 people confirmed dead after China bridge collapse. Here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and glad to have you on the news tonight. My name is Maureen Stone in Uchoke. Governor Chukuma Saludo has called on the Governing Council of the Federal Polytechnic OCO to rebuild and reinvent the institution for greater service delivery. Governor Saludo was speaking to members of the council, led by Senator Banabas Gemade, visited him at the Governor's Lodge Amobia. Government House correspondent Ejigabana filed in this report. The Governor, who assured of his readiness for strategic partnership with them to rebuild the institution, lamented that the state of education system in the country, particularly tertiary education, and told the new council that it is important that it is important and told the new council that it is an important opportunity for them to do something unique. Senator Gamade, who described Governor Soludo as the most famous central bank governor, revealed that members of the council extended the courtesy of informing him that they have resumed work in the institution. Senator Gamade noted that the Polytechnic is of high repute in the area of technology and training, promising to bring the institution closer and collaborate with his government to add more value. In attendance at the Corsi call, where the Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest Ezajui, the Commissioner for Local Government, Chieftaincy and Community Affairs, Mr. Tony Collins, Mwabunwane, among others. Anambra Governor's wife, Mrs. Monye, has surpassed the 500 persons target for her ongoing free organic seeds program in the state. The Governor's wife released 131 names of beneficiaries for the fourth batch of the program, bringing the total of beneficiaries to five, so far to 587, since a total of 59 persons indicated interest in the free seats for the first batch of the program, which was announced on July 7, 2024, the numbers have continued to skyrocket with as many as 179 persons taking interest in the seats in the second announcement by the governor's wife. Mr. Soludo had on July 4, 2024, announced that the free seats program, which was originally planned to be benefited by just 500 persons, was a way to celebrate her 54th birthday, which comes up on the 31st of this month. The Anambra First Lady, who is also the founder of the non-governmental crusade, held a living with Nonya Saludo Initiative, stated that winners will be announced on her social media handles and on other affiliated platforms every weekend until the end of July. The governor's wife added that seeing each garden do well across all the benefiting households would give her every sense of celebration that any birthday could present and ask those who would be benefiting to carry out the task with dedication and excellence. However, on July 10, Mrs. Noyes Saludo made a new announcement to extend the deadline for the program beyond the current date, citing increasing interest from people whom she would love to However, on July 16, Mrs. Soludo made a new announcement to extend the deadline of the program beyond the current day, citing increasing interest from people whom she would love to benefit from the gesture. Oka Capital Territory Development Authority, ACTDA, is to commence the construction of inner roads within its jurisdiction with paving stones. The Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the agency, Mr. O.C. Onuko, disclosed this during the commissioning of a 130-meter street road in Amansi, Oka North Local Government area, constructed by ACTDA. The paving stones, for the paving stones, correspondent Chibuzo Okoye tells us more. Commissioning the road, the Anambra State Commissioner for Works, Engineer Ifan Yokoma, represented by the Director of Highways in the Ministry, Engineer Noel Okoye, said that the government of Professor Shuma Saludo is happy with the positive exploits of ATDA under Mr. Onuko, adding that the paving stone road lasts longer and it is durable as well. Earlier, Mr. Onuko explained, So this is a type of rigid pavement and we know it has been lasting and it lasts for years. We are very happy today that we are gathered here 
to cut this and to rejoice on behalf of what Mr. Governor, the solution provider, has, you know, uh, magnanimously offered us here. That the Pavingstone Road Initiative was conceptualized, designed and executed by the agency, saying that they want to use the Amansi Road to experiment with the use of the new initiative in subsequent inner road constructions in Oka Capital Territory. The other boss explained that the road has a good drainage system with solar-powered street lights, and what they've done is in line with Governor Saludo's agenda of building a smart mega city through uncommon innovations. This is a project the concept was it was conceptualized, designed, and executed by Oka Capital Territory Development Authority, ACTA. We are trying to now begin to experiment the use of paving stone in road construction, especially within our inner city roads. Yes, it's a 130 meter road we have done here, paved and done the drainage. And uh, there's quality assurance. The chaplain to Governor Saludo, Reverend Father Dr. Rafael Oyekwelu, whose house is along the street, appreciated Governor Saludo for developing the state simultaneously and commended Mr. Onuka and his team for doing fantastic jobs in Oka Capital Territory, praying God to bless them. I wish to thank you, Hatadri, the Governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Chukuma Saludo, CFR, who has been doing very, very remarkable work in road construction, security, and other areas in the state. We thank the MD of ACTA, Mr. Osi Onogo. He has been doing a wonderful job. He knows the job very well. In their separate species, the member representing Njikokatu constituency in the status of assembly, Honorable Jude Apwa, who is also deputy majority leader of the house, and his Oka North constituency counterpart, Honorable John Mark Ikune, all eulogized Mr. Onuko for being innovatively creative in the discharge of his duties, describing the road as a paradigm shift from what people used to say in the state. Others who spoke at the event, including the engineer who constructed the road, Mr. Vincent Ojuhu, gave assurance that the road will last for 15 to 20 years and revealed that paving stone roads are durable, cost-effective and easy to maintain. The Transition Committee Chairman of Oka South Local Government Area, Prince Chinedu Okafo, and his Nchikoka counterpart, Barrister Chinedu Ononeba, among numerous others, were present during the commissioning of the road. From Amansi in Oka North Local Government Area, this is Chibu Zokoye for ABS News. The Commissioner for Youth Development, Mr. Patrick Aramba, has described the One Youth Two Skills Program as the most innovative and comprehensive approach to solving the problem of unemployment and youth restiveness in the state. Mr. Aramba, who was addressing the One Youth Two Skills Phase Two Master Trainers in Oka during their capacity building training, expressed confidence that the state will record impactful economic growth through the program. Correspondent Valentine Badoya has the details. Mr. Agamba appreciated Governor Saludo for his commitment to the development of youths of Anambra State and encouraged the master trainers to prioritize service delivery for the good of the state. This training workshop and certification program was approved by Mr. Governor Saludo, CFA, as part of the innovation to upscale the one with two scale program. The key essence of this retraining and certification is to ensure quality assurance, a standard of training in line with people's manifesto. It is important to note that Mr. Gordon also approved and released funds for this exercise to support all the prospective trainings. The Special Advisor to Governor Saludo on Youth Empowerment Program, Dr. Nelson Omenuga, in his remark, noted that the youths are at the heart of the development of every society and encouraged them to utilize the opportunity to add value to the livable and prosperous Anambra agenda of Governor Saludo. I am able to of you in this agenda of and all the youth. I want to tell us that all of you are the heart of this administration, are the heart of the success of this program. Because 
if you do not pay them well, you will not be able to achieve what we set out to achieve. And that is to create more businesses. So that is why we are taking time, spending resources, the much can afford, spending time to make sure that all of you are properly oriented on what we actually want to achieve. On his part, the Deputy Chief of Staff and Chief Protocol to the Governor, Chief Chinedumoye, harped on the need for them to ensure they raise smart entrepreneurs through giving their best. He noted that the pride of every successful entrepreneur is knowing that he or she mentored someone to become successful and encouraged them to maintain focus as the whole essence is to make Anambra great. So I want to encourage you to develop the passion of inviting that knowledge that you know in the end, it remains. That's why you engage as the master trainers. Let your satisfaction be that you have invited this thing successfully on your trainers. The training will see to certification of the master trainers ahead of the apprenticeship and entrepreneurship stage of One Youth Two Skill Program Phase Two. In Orca, Valentine Badua reporting, Fabius News. The Commercials Department of Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, has celebrated retirees who contributed to the growth of the station in their respective capacities while in active service. Nine retirees, including a former acting managing director and chief executive officer of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Mr. Ben Ekwonu, were honored and celebrated. Correspondent Valentine Badula once again covered the event in our reports. Addressing the gathering, the managing director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Obidegu, harped on the need for employees of any establishment to always be committed to delivering quality services and maintaining good relationships with colleagues. He advised the commercial staff members of ABS to ensure they leave the establishment better than they met it through impactful service and legacy. I really, really pity anybody who is working in a place and you are not making effort to contribute to the growth of the place because the way you work here is the way you're going to work for yourself your attitude to work when you're working for somebody or when you're working in an establishment because look retirement beckons to everybody every day all of us are retiring so to end i pray that almighty god will touch the heart of all of us Amen. to as much as possible give more than they have given to abs so that we'll have an ABS that will be better than we met it in the mighty name of Jesus. The director of the commercials department, Lady Uju Ifediba, in her remark, said that the objective of honoring the retirees was to appreciate them for their meaningful contribution to the growth of ABS and those that they mentored during their service day. She noted that it is important to celebrate and appreciate people when they are still living, which according to her, will encourage the younger ones to commit to diligence and selfless service. This long-awaited something that has been a long... Some of them that they are here, they've retired maybe past 10 years, 12 years, 8 years, 6 years. So that's why we are here today. So we welcome all of you to commercial department. On behalf of the retirees, Mr. Ekwono expressed happiness being remembered after many years of retirement and appreciated ABS commercial department for the thoughtful gesture. He encouraged the staff members of the commercial department and the entire ABS family to always radiate love and work in harmony and in synergy to achieve sustainable growth. I thank all of you, thank you sir. for joining me and my colleagues. This hour we have been honored. As on your first. I will carry a message to other colleagues who are not here. You missed a lot. The event climaxed with the presentation of gifts to the retirees, courtesy of the ABS Commercial Department. Directors from department, including the Director, News and Current Affairs Department, Mrs. Judy Jeff Mwabeze, that of Administration, Tina Ekenta, and their finance counterpart, Mrs. Ebele Mwoye, among others, attended the event. In Orca, Valentine Badwa reporting, Fabius News. Due to come on the news, House of Representatives investigates rising cement prices. No fewer than 11 people confirmed dead after China bridge collapsed. 
here is a special message. Governor Chukum Asterudu has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Ibo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break. In a world hungry for goodness. With a splash of golden terra oil, a mom can transform a frown into a smile. Make a lunch hour a happy hour. Change no thanks into yes please. Provide care when our nearest and dearest needs it most. And resolve family feuds without blowing a whistle. Providing tasty, nourishing family meals is all that matters. The world needs moms because where there are moms, there is hope, happiness, and love. Golden Terra Oil or Pure Love. Tomato mix in a new stand up pouch. Welcome back to the rest of the news. The Joint Committee of the House of Representatives is investigating the arbitrary rise in cement prices in the country. Major producers in the industry, including Dangote Cement Company and the French Africa PLC, have been asked to submit documents detailing their production costs to justify the current market price of cement. The committee led by Chairman Represent Rep. Jonathan Gaza resolved to visit the production plants of these companies after reviewing their financial records. The goal is to ascertain the cost Cars of production and determine a fair BMW. price of cement for all Nigerians. Super. At least 11 people have died and more than 30 are missing after a high-grade bridge partially collapsed during torrential rains in northwest China. The provincial authority says the bridge over a river in Shanxi province's Shangula city collapsed due to a sudden downpour and flash floods. Rescue teams have recovered several vehicles that fell into the river. With efforts still underway, according to authorities, Chinese President Xi Jinping has urged an all-out effort to find those still missing. The 11 dead were found in five cars that were pulled from the river below. Remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page. Follow us at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube to take an at ABS Art. Television to take an English on proficiency test at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www dot abstudytv.com and now a recap of the main points a before we go was Governor Saludo assures partnership with the governing a council of federal politics in her pouch and, and I'm the state government set to invent paving stones for construction of routes House of Representatives is investigating rising cement prices. No fewer than 11 people to have been confirmed dead after the time of this with the Joey every day, To end the news of special message again, Gradually, Governor Chukwuma Saluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of court of Let us the give him maximum support for the task and ahead. And that was the Joey grew bigger, for tonight. The girl decided Thank it was you time to return it to the wild. My name On the day is of Maroon parting, the Joey clung to her, reluctant to let go. Three years later, the anger unexpected.